Vivi. Vivi. Short for Genevieve. Aww. So what does Vivi need training on? Well, she got a new brother. Okay. And she didn't like him. Uh oh. She had, um, we have, I have a 15 and a half year old. Uh huh. And I had an eight and a half year old who died. She died suddenly in February. Oh no. So, and Monty was 15. It's like, I don't want to be without a dog. So we found Vivi. Okay. And then for the same reason, Monty's 15 and a half. She needs a playmate. Monty does not want to play. He just wants to go stand in a corner and lean on the wall. Kind of, you know, he's yeah. in his last year, probably, if that long. But she needed a playmate, so I ended up... I wanted a young adult, not a senior dog, uh, but I ended up finding a puppy. It fell in my lap. Oh, no. So she'll be seven months old this week. He is a little bit four plus. We're not sure about him. Okay. Because he's a... I've got rehomed dog. Gotcha. So what I like to do in my training is I like to find out what it is that you need done with your dog or find it out what it is that you want to do with your dog and then work together with you to do it. Okay. So my training is I'll sit here and I will listen to what you have to say. I'll observe your dog and then I will show you how to accomplish what it is that you're wanting to work on. And then through the week, you'll go home, so you'll have homework, and you'll have to work on that homework okay. every day. Okay. Until we meet again in the next week. Okay. And then once we meet next week, we'll do an evaluation, see where you guys are at, uh, see if the training um, has taken and if you've been working on it, and then we can go to the next step after that. Because what I don't like to do is I don't like to say, okay, Karen, we're gonna teach the basic sit, we're gonna teach laying down, we're gonna teach walking beside you, and we're gonna teach you to stop jumping all in one session. Because it's not fair to you, yeah. and it's not fair to your dog, because the reality of it is life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you might have things that you're doing with your family or your kids or grandkids or work, or maybe your dog just isn't feeling good that day. Or maybe you have to go out of town or you're on a vacation or whatever, and you can't do the training that day or the next day, so it's not fair to throw four or five different things at you at once and say, okay, go home and work on all this and come back and expect you to have it all done. We have to teach them daily so that they will remember it and that they will retain it. And it becomes like muscle memory. Okay, yeah. So that's what we want to do is build muscle memory in the dog so that the dog understands what we're doing. So the basic things to dogs and to dog training is the proper tools, and the tools being collars or harnesses and leashes. So a harness is good after a dog has been trained. Okay. Initially, you don't want to train a dog on a harness because it distributes the weight through their body and they don't get the, the leash correction that they do whenever the, okay. it's on their neck. So we go into a little bit of dog psychology, which I try to incorporate here with most of my training and learning in the wild Whenever a mom has puppies and the puppies are doing something wrong, how does the mom correct them? Probably grabs them. <laughs> right. She grabs them by the neck and she's sitting there. She's not choking them. She's not cutting their airway supply off, but she's sitting there and she's massaging their neck with her teeth, telling them, hey, knucklehead, knock it off. I don't want you doing that anymore or come over here. So that's one thing that we have to know whenever we're training dogs is we will move this collar or we will move the leash up to the collar and we will train on the collar. Now eventually, we can come off of the collar and go to a leash whenever the dog understands the behaviors that we want. Okay. But initially, we have to be on that collar. So that's a little bit of dog psychology uh, that we have to know on how to train dogs. The basic foundation of everything with dog training begins with the sit. If we don't have a sit, we don't have anything. It's much like whenever the Egyptians were building pyramids and they would build a pyramid from the base up, you have to have a good foundation. You can't build it from the top or the point down. So we want to teach a basic sit. She is pretty confident. Nope, she's pretty calm. She is very calm, yes. So to teach a basic sit is very simple. The sit is taught the same way every time, every dog. It doesn't matter what breed it is. It doesn't matter if they've got two legs, three legs, four legs. 
there's only one way to teach a sit. And to teach a sit, we come up and over the nose. So, come here. Vivi, come here. Come here. Sits. Good okay. sits. Good sits. So what we do here is we take this treat and it's going up and over their nose. So it causes their butt to go backwards into a sit. Good sits. Good sits. Come here. Sits. Nope. Nope. Here. It's right here still. Sits. Sits. Good sits. We have to be patient. Sits. Sits. Nope. Nope. Sits. Good sits. So patience and timing is everything. We've got the proper tools. We've got the leash. I don't like the retractable leashes. Yeah, I don't. A flat collar. This is what we call a flat collar. There's different collars. We've got a prong collar. We've got a zip chain. We've got a fur saver. And I, this one is perfectly fine. No issues with it at all. So what we want to do is we want to take this treat and we're putting it in front of her nose and we're going slowly back. If we go fast, she's going to miss it and she's not going to see where it went. She's not going to know that it's in front of her. Vivi, come here. Come here. So we entice her with treat. Good sits. So as you can tell, the training is already starting to slowly take place. Even if you had a sit on her before, I want to teach you how to do it. Yeah. So that you can go back home. Do it like that. You can go back home now and you can train all your other dogs because now you know how to teach a basic sit. Okay. Good sits. Good sits. So up and over their nose. Timing is crucial on this. As soon as her butt hits the ground, okay. this treat has to go into her mouth. What you're doing there is you're marking the behavior. So it's much like you see some people that do clicker training. Yeah. I don't do clicker training because I always lose those silly clickers. So I don't do the clicker training. I mark it with food or I mark it with a verbal yes. I always have my voice with me. So that's easier for me to do than a clicker. Yeah. So we don't want her up here like this. So we'll put her back and we'll tell her Vivi sits. See it? Nope. See it? Nope. Good sits. Good sits. Good sits. Good sits. Good girl. Notice I didn't give her a treat that time. Yeah. Because I don't want her to know that every time that she does something, she's going to get a treat that she can eat. Yeah. Your praise and your yeah. love have to mean just as much to her as this food. Okay. So whenever we do this and we're getting her into a sit, we want to switch it up every once in a while. Okay. In the beginning, nope, no ma'am. In the beginning, what we want to do is we want to do food. But eventually we're going to wean her off the food because you're not always going to have food with you. If you're in Lowe's or if you're taking her on a trip or you're on an airport or you're in Home Depot or PetSmart, we might not have treats on us. Yeah. Or if you're on a walk. So the verbal praise has to mean as much to her as this food. Yeah. And I'm keeping my hand here. She's not able to get to the food, yeah. but I'm just petting her. Yeah. This, does, this does a couple of things here. This is allowing her to have the food where she can taste it and feel it. And I'm petting her and loving on her so that she doesn't get food aggressive okay. because we don't want her to be food aggressive. So this does, this does multiple things to her. It also is allowing her to stay in a sit. She'll pop up, that's okay, because we're new to this. Good, see it? And she's seven months, you said? Uh -huh. Perfect. So she was born during the COVID era. Yep. <laughs> with very little socialization, if at all. We wanna make sure that whenever we give her the treat, that she gets in the sit. Eventually what we're going to do is, she's gonna understand the sit and she's gonna have to look at you. That's giving you that confirmation that, yeah. hey, I know that mom's in charge, I got to do what mom tells me to. Sits. Good sits, Vivi. Hey, good sits. So mom, I want you to work on a sit with her. You can stand or you can sit. It doesn't matter what you want to do. But what we want to do is we want to get her to where she's up and walking. And we want to show that, Vivi, come here. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Mama's got the treats. Here you go, Mom. Baby, sit. Good job, Mom. Good. Good. Little bit slower on the sit. 
Try not to come up so fast okay, because okay. if you do, yeah, yeah, yeah. she won't see your hand. Yeah, yeah. Especially since she's got the fur in her eyes. She might not see it right <laughs> off the bat, huh? About time for a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> she's a cutie. Come on, come. Beanie. Good mom. Good girl. Sit. See, she's already getting it. Good girl. So, Good girl. homework this week, and we're not done with training, but homework this week. Homework this week is going to be Vivi has to sit, and do you have a bolt? Perfect, you've got a bowl. I'm gonna use that here in a second. Vivi has to sit before she eats. Okay. Vivi has to sit before she goes outside. Vivi has to sit before she comes inside. Vivi has to sit before she gets in a car. And if you go on a walk, whenever you stop, Vivi has to sit. Okay. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well that's gonna be almost impossible because we just learned to sit. What we're looking at is the behavior from her, not how long she's gonna hold it. We're not working on, we're not working on her holding that for five minutes. We're working on her showing you that she understands the verbalization of the sit and whenever you give her the, the praise with the treat. Okay. So she's gotta to go to that sit. Once she goes to that sit, if she pops back up, for now it's okay. Okay. We are not worried about that at all. Say it, she's not We're gonna to work, there, right, yeah. we're gonna work on her holding this sit next session. Okay. This session is all about her sitting when you tell her to. So whenever we're doing this, a lot of people say, well, I can't get my dog to stay. I can't get my dog to come to me or I can't get my dog to be around me because whenever the food comes, she's just going around in circles and she's just being crazy or he's being crazy. The only way to control a dog is to have physical control of the dog. So in order to be able to do this before she goes in and out of the house, before she eats, the only way to control her is on a leash. So she's going to have to be on a leash during these okay. times. Okay. Otherwise, if Vivi wants to, if we set the bowl down, she's just gonna go right to it potentially. And we don't want that to happen. So we want her to go into a sit before we put the bowl down. Now I'm right-handed. Are you right or left-handed? Right. You're right-handed. So we're gonna have the leash in the left hand. We will orientate Vivi. Vivi, come here, come here, come here. Good girl. So we're going to ask her Vivi sit. And whenever we ask her to sit, we can use the bowl to get her to come over okay. because it's full of food. So we can say, Vivi sits, Vivi sits, 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 good girl. And then she gets to eat her food. Okay. So that's what it needs to look like. So she only gets one <laughs> because I want you to do this now. Okay. Sit. Good. good. See it. Now she can eat. So mom, you want to give her a release command. And a release command can be good girl, it could be eat. Whatever you want to do, just make sure that it's the same command every time. Before I let Before her you let her eat. Okay. Yes. So I like to say good girl or good boy because okay. they were good. Yeah. They did what you wanted them to. So good girl and then she gets to eat and you might have to present it. So whenever she does it, good girl, come here Vivi. Come here. Sit. Vivi, sits. Good girl, sits. Nope, sits. Good girl, good girl. That's good, she can have it. See, you might have to entice her into it. Okay. While she's young like this and she's eating her food, don't be afraid to come up here and pick her leg up. Pick this leg up while she's eating. Pick this leg up. Pet her, pet her face, pet her back. Now she doesn't like this senior when they were eating, I mean, they weren't eating side by side, but near each other. Yes. She didn't like the senior coming over to see what she had. Yes. Even though didn't have <laughs> yes. food, she didn't like yes. that. Yes, so what you want to do is you want to try to desensitize her to that. Yeah. So what we want to do is, is she okay with him now? Right now, they haven't, since I got the new puppy, she they haven't been eating. She's together. She's eating in her crate. Okay, So. gotcha. He's eating his crate, she's eating her crate. The senior eats where he normally does. Okay, gotcha. If I moved his food, he probably would never find it. And that's something that we're gonna be able to work on, but in the, what I would like to see you do is maybe take her out of her crate, out of her crate, feed her. 
I know it's going to take some time. It's going to be time consuming, but feed her. And then whenever she's doing it, start loving on her and petting her. Start, yeah, let me touch start that, being in that, the, her space. Okay. And you could also have her eating and have yourself sitting over here, petting on your senior dog and okay. just loving on him. And then you can slowly start to close that distance to her, okay. but you're with the dog. Okay. And then if she starts to growl or starts to get angry or anything else like that, we're just gonna tell her, no, knock it off. Okay. Tone of voice is big with dogs. Voice inflection and tone of voice. So whenever you heard me going into a sit, I was telling her, Phoebe, come here. Yeah, high voice. Good girl, sit, that's a good girl, that's a good girl. Yes, that's a good girl to where I tell her she's a good girl. Now, if she did something wrong, it's gonna be no. Yeah. Sharp, short, and quick. It's gonna rain on us. It is gonna rain on us. Let's go inside. Good girl. Good girl. Come here. Come here. Come here. So we want a shorter leash because if we have a leash, if we're holding it way out here, She's got all this room to go wherever she wants. Yeah. So we want her close. Been known to be a renter. You open the door, she's gone. Yes. So this is going to fix that problem. Okay. It's not going to fix it right away, but it will fix it eventually. So what we want to do, BB sits. 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 Good sits. Good sits. Sits. Nope. BB sits. Good girl. So then we want to allow her to come out. Come here, Vivi. Come on, that's a good girl. Not through the rain. Vivi, good girl. Hey. Vivi, that's a good girl, huh? I'm letting her explore. Self-discovery for a dog is more beneficial than if you teach them something. Yeah. Because if they self-discover it on their own, they will always remember it. It's much like whenever you put a muzzle on a dog. If they learn how to get that muzzle off, they'll always remember how to get it off. If they dig a hole underneath a fence and they get out, they'll always remember that they can dig that hole and that they can get out. So I'm just letting her take me where she wants to go because this is going to eventually build her confidence up. She's going to boost her esteem and it's gonna make her 10 foot tall and bulletproof. This is what we call environmental training. Just letting her be in the environments because you guys plan on taking her places with you guys and, and most people do, but it's been difficult. No, nope, leave it. It's been difficult because of COVID because things have been locked down. So we want to make sure that we get them out as much as we can. Lowe's, Home Depot, PetSmart, Petsway, Springfield Pet Wants. All these places that allow dogs, we need to try to take them so that they can get this environmental training. Eventually, so next session, whenever we start on the healing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you proper leash control. I'm gonna run and get your treats real quick. I didn't break those up. Okay, no problem. Baby, baby, Good job, Mom. Good sit. Good job. Where are we going? So don't give her a treat for that. Okay, baby, baby, sit, sit. So mom, look where your leash is, look where your hand is, okay? So it's going to be easier if you take and you choke up on that okay. leash yep, yep. to where she's not able to squirrel around you okay. and move around. Okay, baby, sit, good sit, good sit, good girl, good girl. There you go. Yeah, instead of, so this is the way you look. Yeah. You're up here, 
because you got all this leash up here to where it's easier if you just cinch down on that leash where she's down there and then put her into a sit. Make sense? Yep. Good. Good. Let me show you some leash work here real quick. Okay. So in dog training, what we like to do is whenever we're walking, I will overhand on yep. this side of the leash. I so attach, short, yep. yep, and I attach this to my pocket right here. Okay. Now eventually you'll be able to relax it and walk, but in the beginning stages, I attach the leash right here to my pocket and I have this one over here. So if she starts to squirrel away, I allow her to do that. I can tell her heel and then she's coming right back here to me. Okay. So I keep this here. That way there, whenever I'm walking, heel. I'm doing a heel. And then I, I stop. She's engaged with those people. So let me see a treat. Oop. So I'm gonna say, Vivi, sit. See it? Nope. See it? Good. See it? My hand did not move from right here. Okay, yeah. It stayed right here. She only has this much leash. She controls how much leash she has. So I can give her a little bit of slack, but she's not gonna get a lot. She can't circle around here. If she does try to circle, we use our natural environment. So what we'll do is we'll come over here, Vivi, heel. We'll come over here and we'll tell her, Vivi, sits. 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 See it, good, see it, good girl. See, I switched hands, this hand's free. Good girl, good girl, and now I'm right back up here. I'm right back where I was. She's going to sit before she goes outside, before she comes inside. Remember, she's gotta be on a leash for this first week. Because okay, yeah. if she's not on a leash, she's just gonna keep running around and running in circles and stuff. You're gonna make her sit whenever you're going on a walk and you stop and she's got to sit before she gets up into the car. Remember, she doesn't have to hold it right now. We're going to work on that next session. Okay. Once you get all of that going, you're going to see a difference in her because she's going to start becoming more obedient with you. Okay. She's going to start becoming more pattern trained. She's going to get that muscle memory. And that's what we're looking for. So over here, what I'm going to do is if these pallets aren't too tall. Oh yeah, we've got some pallets over here. Come here. Good girl. Good girl. Come here, Vivi. Come here, Vivi. Come here. Mom, come over here and call her. Come here, Vivi. Come here, Vivi. So all I'm doing is holding the leash so yeah. that she doesn't get to go backwards. Okay. Vivi, come here. Come here, Dada, good girl. Right through the puddle, good job. Good job. So Karen, thanks for coming out today. I think that uh, we got a lot accomplished with Vivi and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Well, thank you so much. You're we really welcome. It. Thank you, ladies. Come on, Vivi. Come on, Vivi. So we got a lot accomplished today. Uh, we took Vivi, who is seven months old, who has no obedience, no socialization, and we were able to teach Vivi the basic sit. Uh, got a lot accomplished, taught some dog psychology, got some environmental training inside one of our local businesses here. And all in all, it was just a really good day. I think that Karen's gonna walk away with the confidence to be able to go through the next week, train her dog what she needs to, and then we'll meet next week and we'll expand upon the training. Karen will be able to take the training that she learned today and also apply that towards her other dog that she has at home, a four month old uh, mixed schnauzer and uh, they're just having sibling rivalry right now and that's just common. But stay tuned guys, go follow my social media pages, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I'm verified on all those pages, James Craig Mile, uh, TikTok and YouTube as well. Go subscribe and we'll see you guys next week.